This video lecture is about activity-based costing. Now, you understood how we do job costing. That's the way we were doing cost accounting for a number of years. Activity-based costing is relatively new in the last 15 or 20 years. So our first learning objective here is to understand the difference between traditional costing and activity-based costing. Then we're gonna look at how we develop an activity-based costing system. We're gonna introduce new terminology here. We're gonna talk about activity cost pools and activity cost drivers. Then we're gonna look at the cost benefits of activity-based costing. And finally, we're gonna focus on activities and look at the difference between value-added and non-value-added. Now, to begin with, cost accounting systems, the job order costing, the process costing system, used one overhead predetermined rate. That is, they collected all the overhead costs and put it into one pool. And then they selected either direct labor, direct uh, labor dollars, or machine hours to allocate those costs to the product. And the assumption was satisfactory when direct labor was a major part of the cost to produce a product or service. But today, you see, more and more it's becoming computerized and the uh, activity uh, the uh, <laughs> direct labor costs are becoming a smaller part of the total cost to produce whereas manufacturing overhead is becoming a much larger part and so therefore we need a new approach because of these changes in manufacturing direct material usage has gone down total overhead costs have gone up so it's no longer appropriate to use just one overhead cost pool and one driver when you have a very complex manufacturing process. That kind of process would require multiple allocation bases and that's what ABC is all about. First, there's two steps. First of all, you take the major pool. In the past, we had one pool, say, of a million. Well, now we look more closely at that pool and we determine what kind of costs are similar. We come up with multiple cost pools. That is, we break that million into five or six other smaller pools. 
Then we ask ourselves, what drives the cost in those pools? That is, what activity, if I increased it, would it increase the cost in that pool? And if I have that cost and effect relationship, then I refer to that or I consider that to be my cost driver, and that will be my allocation base. So visually then, we're going to do this. We take the overhead pool costs and we break it into, in this case, four. Purchasing, storing, machining, and supervising. Then we ask ourselves, what drives the cost in purchasing? Well, that would be the number of purchase orders. How about storage? That would be the amount of square footage. How about machining, machine hours? How about all those costs that are supervisory type costs? These are all indirect manufacturing overhead costs. Well, I have two products. You can see the bench is rather simple and the AB coaster is a little more complex, more parts. And therefore, I then look at what activities are consumed in producing the bench. How many purchase orders? How much square footage does the bench take? How many hours is it on the machines? And how many uh, hours of, or how many employees work on that so that the supervisor cost can be allocated based on the employees? And the same with the coaster. So that is how the overview of it is. Here's another overview. We have the overhead costs and we break it into seven different activity pools. And we then determine what drives the cost in each of those pools. Now what would be best then is a demonstration. But the four steps, first of all, you identify the activities and you classify them. That is you allocate the overhead into cost pools. Then for each pool, you determine what activity drives the cost. Then you compute an activity-based overhead rate, and then you assign the overhead cost using that rate for every activity that the product has consumed or used. Let's assume we have Atlas Company produces two products. Again, the bench and the coaster. The bench is a high volume item that sells for 25,000 a year. The coaster is low volume at 5,000. Each product requires one hour of direct labor. All right, good. So therefore the total direct labor hours are 30,000, 25 plus five. Direct labor cost is 12. So I have my direct labor cost, my direct material cost, 40 for the bench and 30 per unit. And my overhead is 900,000. So I'm going to allocate that based on direct labor hours. So I figure the overhead rate, 900,000 times the total number of hours, and I get 30 per direct labor hour. And I there one hour for the bench, one hour for the coaster. So I'd say that the bench cost me 82, and the coaster cost me 72. Now, management wants to set the selling price at uh, a markup of 50%. So at a cost of 82 for the bench, I would be selling that bench then selling price of 123. And for the coaster, 50% increase on that, and I'm looking at 108. So that's how I would sell the bench and the coaster. Now, we want to look at allocating those overhead costs a little finer than just using direct labor hours. So we take a look at the 900, and we then say, okay, look, of that 900, there are three major activities here, setting up machines, machining, and inspecting. And these would be roughly the estimated cost of each one of those activities. And the cost drivers then for setting up machines would be the number of setups, and machining, the number of machine hours, and number of inspections. And then I, exp I uh, determine the expected annual use of each of these cost drivers. 1,500 setups, 50,000 machine hours, 2,000 inspections. Now I get the rate. I divide the annual estimated overhead of each activity by the expected use of the cost drivers of that activity. And I come up with activity-based overhead rates. 200 per setup, 10 per machine hour, 30 per inspection. 
Now, I assign that back to the products based on how much of the cost driver they use. So you can see the bench had 500, the coaster 1,000 of those setups. The coaster being more complicated, the machinery had to be set up more often. The machining hours were less because we have far fewer products, only 5,000 as compared to 25,000. Inspecting was more because it was a complicated product. Now, when I look at the bench, I allocate those costs back to the cost of the bench. And I assign 200 for every cost driver per product for every setup, uh, 10 for every machine hour, and 50 for every inspection. And I have a total of 425,000 uh, overhead costs should be assigned to the bench. Of the 900, 425 goes to the bench. I divide through by the units produced, 25,000, and I get $17 per overhead rate. For the coaster, I do the same thing. And, but now I have an overhead cost per unit of 95. So now let's look at our numbers. That's what I said they would be before. Well, look at that. If I compare traditional costing in the bench at 82, and ABC costing indicates that my true costs are about 69. If I'd been selling that bench at 123, I'd be killed in the marketplace by any of my competitors who had a better picture of what the true cost of that bench would be. That is, if they were looking at a markup of 50%, just like I am, they would be selling that at about 105 instead of my selling mine at 123. On the other hand, it's even worse with the coaster. Because I'm selling at 108, ABC's telling me I'm going to be losing here because my costs are 137. So you see, with poor costing information, we set um, market prices for our product that are going to either under cost or over cost because of the traditional method. Now, the benefits of ABC, we use more cost pools. It's more refined. We have more control over those costs because we understand them. We've looked at them in turn. We just didn't lump them together as we did in the past. And therefore, we can make better decisions. However, some of the limitations, it's still arbitrary. How much actually goes in each pool is an educated guess. And it can be very expensive to implement. So those are the costs and the benefits of it. When should a company use ABC? Well, if you're producing uh, a lot of different types of products and you're producing in a manufacturing environment where their overhead is a significant portion of the total costs, then you should consider using activity-based costing.
Now this is a costing method that is used to assign the manufacturing overhead product costs to the product. Now what has come out of this then is a new way of looking at management. In the past, instead of managing costs, we're looking at now managing activities. And that's what activity-based management's all about. It's an extension of ABC from a product costing system to a management function that focuses on reducing costs and improving processes and decision making. So now we look at all the activities. Now we're not talking product costs, we're talking also period costs here. We look at all the activities, both product costs and period costs, and we determine if that activity adds value. What do I mean? Well, if I was to reduce the cost in that activity, would the customer perceive that this is a poor quality product or service? If the answer is yes, then that is a value added activity. If the answer is no, it's a non-value added activity. And then we can proceed to reduce the costs in non-value added activities. Now here are some of the value added in a manufacturing company, of course, design, machining services, assembly, painting, those are the kind of activities that you will not, if you reduce significantly, there would be an impact on the quality of your product. On the other hand, the non-value, repairing of machines, that's necessary, but it's a non-value added activity. Storage of inventory, moving of inventory. These are areas in which management can focus to reduce the cost. So the, instead of just managing costs, managers are looking at managing activities. The whole idea is that activities consume costs and the product and the production process consumes activities. So if we can focus on those activities, then we can begin to reduce the cost. So that's ABC. First in the product costing area, where I assign the manufacturing overhead to the products based on the activities that product consumes. And also in the general management area, where I look at all the activities that I am managing, and I begin to determine which ones are value added and which are non-value added.